Hello and welcome back. So we have the information that we want, but let's make it look a little bit more presentable, shall we? Okay, so here we have the user ID, okay? Just a random value here. We have, uh, now we need a way to get the actual user instead of the ID itself. But before we do that, let's fix the date. So back here, where we have the date, we can fix it. Now you could create a function here. Let's see, uh, let's go to our functions, a helper. That way you don't have to type this repeatedly. So let's go to our functions here. I'm just going to say function get date like this. And then we'll have a date that is supplied in there, like so. And we just want to change it to something a human can recognize. Now, there could be many types of date format. Then you can just put an extra value here to say format like this, and then make it optional. Um, I don't know what you can call this format, for example. Then you can put an if statement to change formats. But for now, we just want one type of date. So let's just do this. And I'm just going to say return. What we'll return here is date of date, like that. But then let's change it a little bit by using string to time. Now, string to time changes this date string to seconds, like number of seconds. Let me show you this. So, actually, this will not work. Let's do this like that. Okay, string to time, right? So, back here, I would just say get date like that, and then wrap this inside that get date like so. Okay. So if I come back and refresh, you see that now it's a number. Now this number represents the number of seconds since 1970 to the time that I posted this. So that's a lot of seconds from that time. But once we do that, we can then use this uh, value to create our own version of the date. So we use that date function to do that. And then we'll give it a string on how we want it to look like. So I'll say I want small letter J, capital S, capital F. Now, okay, let me put a comma and then put Y. That's the year. So if I do this, now we get 15th August 2020. Now, if you don't want it to show the whole August like this, you can put capital M instead of capital F like that. Small letter M will give you a number. Okay, so there we go, 15th August 2021. And then we want a way to get the actual user and not this right here. So let's go back to our, uh, what's this? Our model, the main model here in the core. So in here, there are things we can do with the insert and there's uh, before insert, right? There's before insert here. Now, in the same way we use the before insert, we can use, um, wait a minute, wait a minute before. Yeah, so I'm going to copy all this, this before insert, boom, boom. And then I'm looking for the um, find, these, per these things like find and uh, where. These are the functions that I run when I want to read data. Right? So the find all and the where clause. So what I would do is I want to edit the result after a select. So we're going to add before select, after select, uh, before insert, after insert, etc., etc. But we'll be adding them as we need them. So for now, we need the after select. So I'm just going to go down here and paste this data like so. So run functions after select like this. 
So if property exists this before insert, but instead we'll write after select like so, take care of the capitalization here. Mm -hmm. After select, right? And then for each, we're just going to copy that and put it here. Boom. Funk, funk, funk. That's it. Okay. So this is run after the select. We run this. Now, what we want to run this on, you see this data here, is what we return here. So I'm just going to say data is equal to instead of a return, right? And then we run all the functions. And then I can return the data here. Return data. After all the functions have dealt with it, and then I will return the result. Now, the re advantage of doing this is that you can add as many functions as you want to manipulate the data. Immediately, it's re uh, retrieved from the database, even before we get it that side. So the advantage of this is you can say something like, uh, let's say if you want to capitalize the first names before, you can create a function to capitalize the first names as they are retrieved, or you want to join the names as they're retrieved, or you want, just want to run a different function after that. So you can do the same thing for after or before select. So you just need to copy all this. And before select, you can run a few functions, but uh, maybe that won't make sense because we won't have the data yet anyway. So we will use after select for now, like this. And uh, let me see here. Run, 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 boom, data, data, data. Now, we can do a for each uh, on the data. If the data is empty, then I don't know. Maybe you may want to, let's see here. I think this shouldn't run if the data is empty. So we should put an if statement. Let's say if is array data like so, boom, sorry, data, like that. Now let me duplicate that and add an opening like this, and then move this inward, like so. Okay, so hopefully you understand what's going on here. We're just checking if we got a result, and then we run all the functions that we require. Now we can, we have to do this exact same thing, copy here, in here, on the where clause, because we uh what's going on yeah because we are doing exactly the same thing so paste here return data and then we're going to add data here data is equal to like so okay so we don't return it immediately we capture it and do some stuff to it after select okay so i'll leave it there and let's go to now the school um the school model. So the same way we have these functions here, right here, I'm just going to add one more, move this down, duplicate. And this function is going to be get user. So I'll just say get underscore user. So we'll be given the data, which will have the user ID. Okay. So here, I'm just going to say user. So this is the data that was returned. And um, hmm, wait a minute, wait a minute. So this data is row, uh, an array of rows. So what I want to do is run a for each loop. So I'll do for each like this, put data like this and key and value. No problem. The value is a row, so row like this. And then we have to return the data afterwards. And then here, we're going to manipulate a few things. So I'll post that here. And then what I will do is I want to have the user model right here. So I'm just going to say user is equal to new user like this. Okay, good. So then we will use the user model and we're going to use the where clause here. So user, I'm just going to say, um, uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. 
I can't use the word data, I can't use that. So let me use result instead. I'm just going to say result is equal to user where, and then here it's user ID, and then there, what are we finding? What we are finding is the row and user ID, like that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Row user ID, yes, that's correct. So if we do get a result here, then we can add it to the list. So whether we it's a good result or not, we're just going to add it. So here I'm going to say data because there's this current, uh, there's data and the current key. So I'm going to say data and get this key because we need to manipulate that. And then in that key, we're going to add another, uh, another item called user like this because that will signify who the user is. So we'll add the entire user row in there. So here, I'm just going to copy this and put it here as a good result. So to recap, what I'm doing here is I'm going through all the results, each row of the result. And in there, I'm just trying to check who owns this row, who created this row. And then once I retrieve that user information, I just add it to that particular row which is which has this key and call it user and then add the user row in there like that okay great now if this works then everything is going to be honky dory let's re refresh no errors whatsoever but then it means we have our data that we need so in the moment of truth let's go to schools.view and right here instead of saying user id i'm going to say row and then user because it should have that and then I'm going to say first name like this. Okay, and let me refresh. Okay, so undefined property class user. Hmm. So things didn't go as planned, okay? So what to do here to debug is to see uh, what we have in this uh, row of data. So I'm just going to copy this rows and right here, I'm just going to print readable. Let me use some PHP tags and say print readable and put rows in there and close it. So let's come back here and refresh. So let's see here if we are getting what we want. Now, <clears throat> of course, I can't see this properly. So instead, I'm just going to echo some pre tags. That way I get to see it better so like this and refresh okay so we have the array <coughs> of objects now in here the idea was that i'll have an extra item here that is user which describes the this user id mm -hmm. so instead of this we didn't get that so let's check to see what's happening inside our model there we go Okay, so the reason it hasn't worked is because we did not define the after select functions. So let me copy this, save that, and let's go to our SKU model here. So we have this get user, but we must tell it to actually run this. The same way we told it to run this before insert. So I'm just going to duplicate this a little bit and put that here, boom protected oops my mouse is not working as planned okay so I'll change the before insert to after select and then what function do i want to run it's get user so i'll copy that and come here and put it right there paste get user remove the other one because we don't want that to run so after select that's good so we have functions that to run before an insert and we have others that we run after a select. So this is good. Let's try again, refresh. And now you see what information we get. So inside this item, instead of just having this information, we also have a user information. And this is the array. So it's an array with 
an object. Now I don't want it to be like this, I just want to have the object directly instead of having an array and then an object. But you can see that this is the user information here and also we have the same thing over there. So let's remove this zero here so that we have directly a class, a, an object, sorry, inside here. So that's easy peasy. If we go back to the function itself, instead of adding the result, we just want to add a first result there. But this will cause an error if we don't find the user because it's going to return false. So instead, what I will do is we're going to say, um, is equal to we can put an if statement here just to simplify things so this will be equal to and then we're going to say if is array this thing so is array like that and then let's put a question mark and then we'll add that otherwise we will add false okay good so let's refresh and there we go. So now we have, we don't have that zero anymore. It's directly an object, same thing here. So as you can see now, we get the actual name over here. Very good. So we can choose any of this user information, whether we want to show the user email, the last name, etc. So let's just add the last name there. So this is all good here. Let me go to schools.view. And where we added first name, I'm just going to copy all of this, duplicate it, and leave a space, and put last name here. So, last name, like so. That way we get to see both the first name and last name, like that. But uh, let me remove this, this right here, out, so that we can only see the information that we want. There we go. So, this information is looking much better. School created by date, blah, blah, blah. So let's see how we're going to add the delete and edit. Now, the advantage of the system we're using here is that once we create this thing for schools, it's just a matter of copying and pasting it to things like students, classes, and tests. And it's going to be exactly the same. We just need to change the amount of items in the table. So once this is working fine, things are going to speed up a little as we create the rest. So I'll see you in the next video.